You're listening to Conversations with Shonda, a podcast that unpacks the community's grittiest, most vexing problems, hosted by Shonda Smith-Baker. There's just so many things that I've been um, curious about in terms of your own sort of uh, journey. It was helpful to to listen. I listened to the book because I think it it adds some layers into like your experiences growing up. Right. 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 And because we're from the same neighborhood, it's like I could make a lot of assumptions around what I thought your journey was. And there was a mm-hmm. lot of things that I learned. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it just continues to magnify for me how you can be from the same neighborhoods and have different experiences. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, from being over north or being from any urban community, people think that it's one global experience. You live over north. Every place is dangerous. Every place looks crazy. Right. Or what the global experience is, or you uh-huh. live somewhere else, it's all safe, and then you forget about the unsafe pockets. Mm-hmm. And so the diversity of experience, the diversity, the the difference of your time at North versus my time at North is different. Yeah, yeah. And it really, you know, and I tell the kids all the time, like, I, you know, I got to experience, like, the late 80s, in the late, you know, like the North High tradition and all of that stuff growing up. So like early 90s, late 80s. So I always tell people like, man, the school spirit, like it was like, man, I just remember when, you know, my dad, coach with John Gray, and I'm just sitting there and I'm at the basketball games, they're packing the cheerleaders and the alumni games and then going to the football games and, you know, spank spanking them is there and like I that's what keeps me where I'm at but like I just remember those days you know growing up with the North High tradition so like yeah no I I totally agree with what you you know I've worked in community a long time and one of the things that I'll say you know that is important and you might you might get this and other folks listening is that some of the schools that are here now like for me like City View or Lucy Laney, yeah, or yeah. some of those, like they came along later. Yeah. But yeah. North, where I went, my son went, my mom went, my grandma went, like there is generational connection yes. that plays out really differently than having another school that might give you the same things, but it doesn't have the same history, the same infinity, the same mm. stories. Mm-hmm. The connections that bring people together that don't have anything in common, perhaps, right. with that school. That's right. That's right. No, I mean, no history. And, you know, like I said, you know, now this generation of kids, they, you know, they have a piece with those schools. But we talking about the North Stars, the Franklins, the 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 North the Lincolns, the, the Willards, the, Lincolns, the Willards. <laughs> and, you know, and forgetting about that history, you know, just. You know, every year going to summer school at Lincoln, you know, to be just, you know, and it, it, yeah, it's just one of those things where, you know, the tradition and the pride in the North side is rich and it's just so much. I get, I always tell a kid, like I could tell them a story of, of each corner on the North side of, I like to always play that game. Like, Hey, this used to be here. This used to be there. And they're like, what? So it's, it's, it's always been, you know, like I said, it's always been good to tell kids that. Yeah, I love it. So you you grew up in this neighborhood. Um, your your family is certainly embedded here. Mm-hmm. What I was surprised about, even though I know your your family to some extent, I thought that your dad sort of graduated from school and became a, a officer, mm-hmm. a cop. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like the journey was more windy than what I understood. Yeah, yeah, it was. Um, it. It was it was a little bit tough for him, but you know he had that small stint of driving a bus for him, for Metro Transit as well. And and I I only remember that at all. I was real young, but I remember that because a couple of times I rode on the bus with him, and we stayed on them apartments right off of Seventh and um, uh, uh, Olson. Those apartments just right there, and I would I remember watching looking outside the window, and my dad my mom be like, "Your dad's here," and then he was in the bus, so. Um, yeah. but just right across from Mickey Lickers. But yeah, it, it it was it was a tough journey. And, and I think that was the biggest piece of why in the beginning he kind of was deterring me 
to, you know, to get step to that way because, you know, just some of the stuff that he faced and or just really wanted to avoid me having to go through some of the same problems. Were some of the things that he faced community dynamics or was it more the cultural dynamics within the police department? Oh, yeah, cultural dynamics in the police department, which, you know, as a as a as a nation, we're 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 uh, still suffering from. But uh, it was definitely that. And, you know, just probably, you know, the association of the community of, hey, you're from here. So this is how you are. Or, or I know this person or I know this family member. And it just had to navigate, navigate those politics. And then um, always, always have to prove, you know, just have to prove yourself um, as as a black male in, in the community and 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 trying to make a name for yourself. Yeah. And just for for the listeners, um, your dad, alongside, I think, nine other officers sued um, Minneapolis Police Department for discriminatory practices and won that suit. Yeah. 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 Um, it was it was pretty dynamic. You know, I grew up, you know, everybody that was in a lawsuit, they they all I grew up as they're like uncles to me. So um, I knew them pretty much all my life. So. It it was pretty dynamic um, and 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 powerful uh, just just to stand up for each other and to stand up to the police department and, and and do something like that and and then stick around and, and try to be part of the change, right? And one of those officers was Rondo, right? <laughs> yeah. that, that eventually yeah. became the police chief, and I learned a lot about that, right? Because I think the stick withedness that you're talking about is like, right? I'm here, I belong mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. There's some treatment that needs to move, right? We need to evolve yeah. from this. Yeah. Um, I want it corrected, but I'm here to stay with it. And yeah. I think there's something about being willing to sort of sit through that pain and through and hopefully moving an organization forward. Yeah. That um is a good lesson for us to learn from from the courage that that it took for them to have done that. Yeah. And and just even referencing to, you know, just how Rondo um sought, sought all this through um through with George Floyd and um trying to get things you know cuz you know any other chief could have probably been like you know what <laughs> I'm out of here you know it, you know at least he stuck it through um into things you know through the trial and all of that and then you know he peacefully walked away so um i mean that's that's just what it is yeah so you so you your dad, um, I'm just trying to lay the context and then I want to get to the book that you wrote. But so you wanted to be a, a peace officer from the beginning. Was that just seeing the influence of, of your dad and your uncle or were there other motivations? Yeah, um, it, it was it was the motivated by Tony and my dad, just just for the simple fact that I mean, that's really all I knew, um, you know, all of their friends, most of their friends were cops and just growing up with, you know, people in the neighborhood that uh, um, interacted with them in a, in a positive way. And and it was really like it was kind of crunch time for me because I was like I wanted to play football. Uh, you know, at that time in the late 90s, it wasn't really like as many opportunities as there are now, like a kids have tons of opportunity. There wasn't that many opportunities to play football. Um, especially, you know, at the division one level, division, just, it was different levels, but it just wasn't that many opportunities. So, you know, I, I was like, well, I gotta, I gotta do something. And then, you know, but I had to do something to where he, you know, my dad didn't have to pay for college. So, um, mm-hmm. it, it kind of came to crunch time to where it was like, well, Hey, this is all I know. And I, I know I got the connections and I, I know I can be a part of this. Um, I think I'm just going to go for it. I mean, what, what what do I got to lose? Yeah. What'd your mom say? She didn't like it. Um, you know, my, my parents were, uh, they were split up. They split up when I was ju- a junior sophomore in, um, at North. So, um, me and my dad lived on the North side, 41st and shared. And then my mother and my brother and sister, they moved over to, um, they moved to Plymouth. So, uh, you know, she she didn't like it because she just knew, you know, being married to my father and, you know, working all the time and just the, the, the more of the she did. She would discourage her was a safety, you know, just, you know, because she's a North Sider, too. So she grew up on the North Side and she was just like. 
yeah, you know, we, we, you know, it could be dangerous for you. And so, you know, just as any mother should, she was more worried about that piece. Yeah. For folks that don't know the North side, how would you describe it? Well, um, rich, <laughs> rich, in, rich in talent and, 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 and eliteness, you know, just, uh, but, uh, I would say the North side is, 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 um, what's the word, uh, loyal. Mm. Um, just like we say in our, our school song, we're, we're loyal to you, Northside High. People forget that 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 Northside is very, very loyal to you. Um, and it just it just uh, um, loyalty is is just basically when you see North High and when you see, um, you know, alumni, it is it, it's, it's, it's the word loyal. I, I agree. Yeah. The you know you talk about the NFL. We got a whole NFL on the north oh, side. Yes, yes. The north and side of life. It's <laughs> serious. It's serious. I mean, it's just you know my kids be like, Dad, why why do you like? Why do you love coming over to the north side so much? I'm because because I'm like that's us. Like <laughs> you love it. Like so. Um, it, it's always been day one for me. Like you know, like you said, NFL. It's it's for life. It's for life. And there's a dynamic nature. I was just talking to someone. It's like, if you don't understand it from inside, it's easy for you to paint it mm -hmm. with, with a brush that yeah. is a narrative that's fed to you. That's right. But it, I said, this is a community that raised me. It nurtured me. It's provided for me. Mm -hmm. um, it's taught me a lot. Yeah. Some of the lessons have been hard, but most of them have been great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Most and of them have been great. It's a lot of, a lot of great things that have come out of this, north side that you know continues to make us loyal and and this is what we strive for yeah so you become an officer you're working for mpd and you end up working at the north high that we're talking about yeah yeah so you opted into that <laughs> yeah that was so that it was a it's a dream it's a dream tony was the sro my dad was an SRO. I, I just remember playing basketball games and they're working the basketball games. And then I remember going to the dances and they working the dance. And I got a, well, I, I know the dance in at 11. Let me, let me get on, let me get on, let me leave early. So I got a couple, couple minutes, you know what I mean? Cause I know they ain't going to come home until, you know, so it was just, I mean, that, that's all I knew. So, um, I seen the relationships that they both develop as SROs and I was like, why not? Like, I definitely got to do that. And, you know, and that really, you know, brought in the, the, the coaching piece too, like being in the school and, you know, just not being somebody that works in the school with being connected. So that, I think that's what kind of, you know, I was able to, to bring the whole coaching piece out uh, when I became an SRO. But I mean, it was it's like a family tradition. So I had I, I just had to do it. I love it. When I think, you know, folks, you know, have a lot of opinions. I know you've been at the heat and in, in the heat of it uh, in a way that I'll never really understand. But around um, the, the school resource officers, officers in, in schools. Well, that's what I knew growing up and I yeah. never really seen them as officers, right? Yeah. Like Mr. Manning, Coach Manning, right? Yeah. Like yeah. there were people yeah. that were just adults that loved us and cared yeah. about us that yeah. were inside yeah. the school. I know that's not always the experience and I've experienced it as a parent, the yeah. negative side of it. Yeah, yeah. But the gift that it gave me is what I saw the energy was um, at North and how you are with the guys and the students beyond that. Right. Um, but certainly the, the the kids that you coach. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's. You know. My recommendation, like I've told to plenty of police departments, is that in order to 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 be successful in that position, you have to put yourself in that community. And it was so much easier for me because I seen each and one of those kids as like as me. So I'm like, it's it ain't about like the coaching, you know, so many opportunities like, hey, you want to coach us here? You want to coach us there? And it's like, no, like, do you understand? I'm seeing 50 of, the, of me here. Like, that's mm -hmm. me. Like, it's it, it, it doesn't benefit me to make. Fifteen, twenty thousand dollars coaching a, a community that doesn't doesn't even care about, 
you know, what's going on in the community. And, 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 and I don't know these kids, mamas and daddies and uncles and aunties and granny, and probably got a switch by one of you. Like it, 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 it takes a village. Right. So like, I think that was the part of like, I gotta be a part of what I was brought up. You know, I gotta be a part of giving back to that as well. So. Yeah. Um, so, so you're coaching and your, your dad, is an officer he's coaching you've got how many other officers are coaching that football team so we had tim lawrence uh who uh metro transit police officer um works with the offensive line and then um we have a couple guys that are in uh corrections for hennepin county um that are, are working um as coordinators and then uh, uh cordell scales who's a, a newly uh a Minneapolis police officer, but has been with us for about four years, but just newly got promoted to be a police officer. So about three or four guys in law enforcement that are still on the staff. Yeah. And I think Cordell, if I remember hearing his story, you inspired him, you and your dad to go into the force after being around y'all. Yeah, well, see that was, so that, that was Cordell and that was Plunkett. Plunkett mm -hmm. as well. Right. Plunkett was, Plunkett was our, Plunkett, uh, his uh our sons played together little league football and then he became our offensive coordinator um and then and he but he was a barber mm -hmm. so he cut everybody's hair and then after being with us he was like man i want to he's like, i want to become a cop and the same thing with scales scales uh, had some stints in the canadian football league in the in the um nfl and then he came to us coach with us and he was like man i want to become a cop <laughs> yeah, I love it. And matter of fact, yeah. it was um, Boys in Blue where yeah. they talked about yeah. Plunkett, right? So if yeah. folks haven't seen that documentary, it's a four-part series on uh, Showtime and and probably on other streaming um, apps, but it, it's definitely worth the watch. So, you know, I, I've established sort of the history, the love, the respect, the loyalty that we have for the neighborhood that we grew up with, right? Like the respect that we have for these young people and the fact that we see their potential where so many people see um, the problems, we see the possibility and we know they just need to be nurtured, right? So you're, you're coaching them. George Floyd gets murdered. Uh, uh, what was the conversation like with those kids in that locker room after that happened? Well, um, the first the first conversation was um, you know, the night of the unrest. And it was, I, we were supposed to have a, a, a team meeting to where we were just, you know, going to do a Zoom thing. And we had to do it earlier because I was going out there um, in the field. So it it was, it was kind of bittersweet because in, in some ways it was like me kind of saying goodbye to them. And, and that, that's, that was like, a, you know, and I've described probably one of the hardest things because it, I, I felt like I was, I didn't have any control of the, of the outcome uh, of what was going on that night. So it was just being realistic. Like, you know, Hey, I might not like, I might not make it back, you know? And, and I know sometimes cops think that all the time, but it was a situation where I'm like, you know, like realistically, like you guys might not hear from me. So that's how that conversation was. And, and, and that was with, you know, the, the, the players and the fam and my family and, and everybody. And it, and you it was, felt, you really, you honestly felt, you felt that. So uh, I, 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 I honestly felt that things could be really bad. And I really wanted to make sure the kids stayed away from what was going on. I, mm -hmm. I didn't feel like that. Like, like I wasn't going to make it until I got to 28th and Lake Street. When I got to that, when, to, when we got to the, um, when we got to the pawn shop and it was on fire, I, I was just like, hey, you know, it is what it is. People see me, I'm good. Once we got, me and Tyler Edwards stepped out of that car and they started shooting. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's no way. I, I, I couldn't see how we were going to make it. I'm like, they're shooting at us coming out the car. Two black cops. Wow. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't think we're gonna make it. Mm -hmm. 
I don't even know what I'm feeling right now, except for a little emotional. <laughs> I'm like, I'm yeah. going to try not to start booing. And part of part of the emotion is that I know my son was on that call with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, for parents of sons, you know, sometimes you got to pull a whole lot out to find out the details. So yeah. he hasn't shared this part with me. So I'm mm-hmm. hearing it as I'm talking through it. Mm-hmm. And it was such an emotional time. And so you're you're out there. You have the same people that look like you, the same people you see your reflection in yeah. shooting at you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and the whole, uh, you know, the it, 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 your life flashes, you know, just like, you know, you know, you know, the work that you've done, but that didn't matter at that time. It didn't matter because you're characterized as somebody in a uniform. So it's, you know, like, like I said, in boys in blue, it, you know, I'm black, but I'm wearing blue. So it's like, I mean, that, that I was characterized just, just like how, how, Everybody of all America seen us. Do you feel like the that energy has shifted? Um, I think uh, what has happened now is that a, a lot of cops that are still working have taken a huge step back and um, have have become. Not a lot or not all, but some uh, just uh, making excuses of of why they can't do their job. And um, I always tell cops now, I'm like, if you do what you're supposed to do, you don't have to worry about getting in trouble or, 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 or somebody complaining about you because you're handling things the right way. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of uh, cops now use that as a crush. Like, yeah, I don't want to do this because I don't want this to happen. And um, to me, you know, being a cop, I think that's more dangerous. Um, and and there's yeah. people like the like we talk about the loyalty of North Side. There's people still on the North Side that have been there forever that that need need the service, and they need they need because they never they never went away. They always needed it, so they just wanted to be treated right. Yeah. So. Following the unrest and and certainly the defund statements that everyone is super familiar with now that that came out of the park here in Minnesota in, in Minnesota in Minneapolis, um, they pulled the officers from the schools. Yeah, and your team went to the school board to say that's not what we want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I. That that's that that I, I was blown away by that. I, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't expect our kids. You know what? It didn't surprise me because I know how strong our young men are, and I knew that they wanted to fight, and I knew what they were fighting for, and it, it made me proud to be a part of what they're doing and have a be a part of their life because um, I know they looked at me. I mean that. That that was just a validation of they them looking at me more than just a football coach, mm-hmm. um, and we, you know, and I and I treat all of them like their family because they are family to me. So, um, it, it it was just you know, it was just a situation where the the school board just didn't take in considerations those those type of relationships and 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 those type of things that these kids needed. And, 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 and I, we all knew, we talked about it. We knew that it would affect our community and our school the most. And we knew that, you know, there could be other schools that uh, probably could be without one, but we knew that it would, it, it would, it would affect us uh, the most here, here at North. Yeah. Well, I was sitting at this desk probably on a zoom and my son Jalen came in here and he said, mom, I'm getting ready to leave and go to the school board meeting. And I remember like not having the minutes cause I'm on zoom to be like, yeah. you're going where? Cause yeah. that made zero sense. Right. <laughs> to, to me at the moment, like you're yeah. going where to do what? Yeah. Um, and then him coming home where he did share um, the importance. And when you have those relationships that um, provide a sense of security and safety and relationships, mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that 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 was accounted for in that in that highly political moment. 
Yeah. And, and, you know, I, you know, I told the school board members, I said, you, you, this, this is not penalized. It's penalizing me in, in, in our unit, but it's, it's really penalizing our kids in our community because now it's uncertain, you know, my position, if I'll be around, can I coach or whatnot? And that, and that, that's too much for our kids to have to go through. Um, especially when they've had stable um, mentors and, and people that have cared about them and helped them out. Like, and now all of a sudden you're, you're talking about, well, no, we don't want those people that you rely upon to be around you guys. Mm -hmm. So you left the department. Yeah. 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 How painful was that? Uh, or did it feel easy? I don't know. It, no, it, it wasn't easy. Um, and, and like I said before, if, if I was still, if I was still SRO, if uh, we had SRO, I, I wouldn't even consider leaving the police department. It was just, you know, uh, I was presented an opportunity to where at the circumstance, I'm like, you know, what, what, you know, why not? You know, what do I got? What do I got to lose? Um, uh, the thing that I cared about the most um, was being with the kids as an SRO. That was that was taken from me. Yeah. And, you know, I just and I, but I made it I made it I made it an uh, effort to where it's. I will do this as long as I can keep this. Yeah. And um, when, you know, when the twins made it a priority, when they when they flat out said that North High football is a priority to us as much as it, it was, it was a no brainer. It was yeah. A no yeah. So you continue to coach. And then you all were faced with another community tragedy with uh, mm -hmm. D Hill, Deshaun Hill uh, getting uh, murdered. Mm -hmm. um, he was a child that uh was making um, wise choices yeah. that had a community surrounding him, had in this potential. Um, and again, if people want to get a sense of, of him and his family and his spirit and his legacy, you got to go watch Boys in Blue because yeah. it, it does its job with that. Yeah. But here you are in the middle of just lots of losses for you and the team. And then this yeah. hits. Yeah. Um, Anything you want to say about that? There's no playbook. There's no playbook for that, Shonda. It's like, it's not supposed to be, I'm not supposed to lead you through tragedy of a young man that is doing every single thing that he's supposed to do. Everything that he's supposed to do. And how, there's no there's no set ways of how you deal with those situations and then it also makes you think like why doesn't nobody else have to go through this man like why why do we have to do this why do we have to suffer through things like this when this doesn't happen anywhere else so um that was a time where not only during george floyd but d hill that i had to express to them more and more how much i needed them Mm -hmm. and how we needed each other and we don't do that enough as adults to let the kids know like hey i i'm here every day mm -hmm. because because of you guys because i need you guys a lot you know yes i have the support family and everything but i i need to be here because of you guys and you guys are the reason why i come so um yeah i came to the the weight room yeah, yeah. I, I I remember I remember all of you and the mothers coming and just being there and yeah. Yeah, I mean that 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 was something I hope no one experiences, but within that, um there was something I understood more deeply. Mm -hmm. And what I what I told people during that time, because you know, I could choose any school I want for my kid. Yeah, yeah. And they were they were at North. My younger two went to North. Mm -hmm. And um, what I told people in that moment, it was like walking into my family's house mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. after a tragedy. Yeah. Where everyone is grieving together. Yeah. Um, the next day there were 
pick up games in the in the gym. Mm-hmm. They were in the young life, yeah. you know, yeah. room. There were chess tournaments. There were teachers crying with students, students crying with teachers. Mm-hmm. This was not an environment where adults were trying to manage kids and make them sit down and do work. Yeah. yeah. This was a community, a family that recognized the tragedy that was, that took time, mm-hmm. that were vulnerable together in ways that supported each other. Um that surprised me even a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the the bond of the guys on that team with you all, like I was in the room, but I felt like I was intruding on a special relationship, right? Like I sort of was going to step in and then I sort of stepped back and just said, let me just see mm-hmm. where I get called in because they need each other. Yeah. yeah. And the bond is already there. I don't, I don't even have a job to do because the job was already done before the tragedy hit. Yeah, 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 and um, it's 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 one day at a time. It's one day at a time, you know. Just uh, the it's a collaborative effort, you know. Like I said, it it was just very much us needing you guys there as well, um, just to see those faces and just see support, even if it's nothing being said. So, um, mm-hmm. but I think that's the biggest thing about why we do what we do. Definitely why I do what I do. Just just continue to have those relationships and being somebody to be counted on and and continue to move forward with that. Yeah. So, you know, so sort of, you know, the family tradition, your sister is an officer. Mm -hmm. Um, I get to see her walking around. She doesn't know me, but every time I see her, I feel like she's family. Um, you, you know, you come into the schools, you've worked with all of our kids. So you're like big bro, uncle to all of them, coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you, you've gone through life with them. You've gone through proms and graduations and tragedies. You've seen the city on fire. You've had yeah. your profession questioned and embraced all of these things. You've been on documentaries and talk shows and all. <laughs> the things. And then you decide to write a book. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you know, uh, it, it's it's just it's it's a simple as simple as an opportunity, you know. Um, and and I, I figured, you know, Doctor Yeager had for years saying, "Hey, you got to write a book. You got to write a book. You got to write a book." And you know, I ne- I never even thought about how to to approach it. And just like with the twins, you know, I was I was given a call, and um, a guy was like, "Hey, we're thinking about." putting together a book, would you be interested? And I was like, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it went on from there. And it's, it's a, it's a, uh, obviously a proud accomplishment of mine because just to have my name on something, um, have some words from me and my daddy and, um, have, you know, just have people read what's going on and just kind of, you know, sharing, you know, some of the things I went through to get to where I'm at. Yeah. What do you, what did you want to get out? Like what, what was important for you to share in that book? I think what was important was just uh, the way that I we conducted as a family in law enforcement. Um, mm-hmm. Just not, you know, like not shedding a negative light, but just knowing the struggles that we went through, but staying based in our community and, and giving back and, and not being, you know, a, a person that polices the people that he knows, but being a resource to the community. And I, I, and, and then the football journey, you know, I just, I wanted, I wanted people to know, like, it was a grind and it still is, but, you know, starting from, you know, really just nothing to, to each year building the success of the program, but getting kids to the next level, whatever level it may be. And I I wanted to shed a positive light on just the, the success of the athletics and football and, and, you know, just, you know, how rich the community is, but in the most part, like I, how I've been striving to make things better in the community. Mm-hmm. For some people, what, what they think about with policing is only what's broken. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have probably a more balanced approach and you probably have an even more balanced approach than I do because, you know, I have family members that I can, you know, consider family that work inside that department. 
Mm-hmm. I also know if someone come in in this house, I I need to be able to call somebody. I need I need protection, right? Yeah. I've yeah. also had a kid beat up by the police, so yeah. I've got I've got sort of all sides, and hopefully I can hold that within balance. But yeah. I think you know part of part of what I think you're sharing is what community policing does look like through the experience of what you all have done and the and the legacy that you're leaving yes in this community and beyond yeah that's most important that's the biggest the legacy part. yeah the legacy and just um showing really just showing people how it should have should be done um within law enforcement and in community policing you have uh apparently college age kids <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, are any of them taking that same path? No, no. Um, uh, Adrian is uh, sports management. Um, uh, he's the oldest. Uh, Nyla's getting into nursing, um, similar to my wife. And then um, Adria, my the the baby, our youngest. Uh, she's uh, gonna get into education. So, um, they granddaddy was like, no. Nope. <laughs> no, no, no more, no, no more. Brittany's, Brittany's the last one, and then our our brothers in the real estate. So, my yeah, my so yeah, he. Uh, That's it. Yeah, Brittany's the last one, and she, and for the record, she's going around telling people her name is O A. Oh, okay. Yeah. We got, we like, got a dispute out like, in the streets. <laughs> no, nah, I was like, it's only one O A. <laughs> Call her O B. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. What What would you tell folks though that are interested in going into 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 policing? What would you What would you honestly tell them? Well, this is the best time right now. Um, not only just because there's obviously availability and the wages are very very good. Um, the uh, union contract just like. Like, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I seen that. I was at the precinct uh, when they when they hit the contract. And um, I was like, I might I might come back. <laughs> we need you back. I know the twins love you. We love you with the twins, but we might need you back. Yeah, I was like, because I wasn't making that kind of money back then. So, I, uh, you know, but uh, it's I think that in it, it's definitely uh, uh, they. You know, anybody coming in new has the support of administration to to be effective and and do things the right way. So I think this is just a a great time for young people to come in, um, not even young, just new people to come into the police department and and make a change. Yeah, I just did a series on uh, women in law enforcement and how they impact the culture of a place. Mm-hmm. So you have a sister in law enforcement. Do you all approach it differently? Is that a real thing around approach or? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. But she runs things though. Like it's 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 amazing because like I always told her like you can't be a lazy. You got to be reliable, and she's a really good cop. But that whole shift is like if something happened, <laughs> they know they they know they're like. And the funny thing is, she was like. They don't play about me because they know of you and dad. And they were like, yeah, well, your, your dad is he's the boss, but your brothers, he's a nut. And we don't. And, and, and still a lot of cops are like, we don't want to disappoint your brother. Oh, that's awesome. Because <laughs> they know I will roll up to a call like, hey, man, so you was on that call with my sister. What's up? But I mean, that's just the respect. So like um, I like I said, uh, it, there's still a lot of good things going on to where people want to do things the right way. And the ones that are here want to work hard and, and, and continue to, uh, to to do things the right way. Yeah. For some of the, and I think you've addressed a lot of them, but I think I'll just be more explicit for the folks that, um, that are working on reforms, right? I'm one of them um, that want to improve sort of what justice looks like. And this whole, there's a code and yeah. it's not going to be broken. And there's mm-hmm. not folks that sort of have courage within the system to speak up against the Derek Chauvin's and the folks that are out there acting, you know, a, a butt and, and acting rowdy with, with our people. Mm-hmm. Do you think that there's more space 
space now for people? So when you're saying there's more room now, the administration supports it. Is that what you're meaning? That not just supporting you, but supporting the yeah. bad actors not to be there? Yeah. So one of the things we were we were on the uh, committee with the mayor, uh, me and a, a bunch of other uh, community people. Um, and, you know, one of the topics was trying to, you know, how, how can you make change? Um in the police department. And one thing that I, that I made known was that there wasn't a support system for a training officer to let somebody know that the person that's training them is effed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that made the mayor think like, what? I'm like, yeah, like if I'm new, if I come in and I know the person that's training me ain't right, who do I tell? Yeah. You know what I mean? So and then um, I, I always made it, you know, and, and I made it uh, known that, you know, the field training, uh, the field training program, it was set up for failure. Mm -hmm. You know, meaning that um, if somebody is doing something wrong or somebody doesn't get something, it's, well, you're not good enough. You can't cut it. See you later. It's like, well, what actions are being taken? And, and I describe it in my book for the field training, opposed to being with the same person for five months over and over again, and y'all don't like each other. I'm not getting any better. Yes. Like we, we're, we're not, the, the training is not teaching. The training was used to weed people out. Mm. So those, those are the two main factors that, you know, things have gotten, will get better with the police department and, when administration and the chief, they understand that that's things that have to be done that be successful with the police department. Yeah. I was on that same committee with you. Yeah. I, you know, I, <laughs> I mean, we have an audience, but I forgot that we were on it until you said that's it. right. I, that. to, I, I don't even know what time's on. Look, look, <laughs> we got home late. I, I was on the West coast. So I don't even. Right. It was, it was on zoom okay. too, to be fair. Most of it was on zoom, but yeah. I mean, it does, it does feel remarkably different here. And I feel like while Minnesota has been ground zero, I feel like there's been also some great movement yeah. on things, right. There's still a road to go. Like I am not here to say oh, anything. Yeah. 100%. Like I'm yeah. not, that, that is not what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 No, you're right. You're right. It's, we got a ways to go. We got a ways to go. I mean, moving in the right direction, but a ways to go. Yeah. If folks want to uh, learn more about you and, and read this book, where would they find the book? What is the name of the book? I know the name, but what's the name of the book? So the name of the book is Twin Cities. Um, and it's just basically my life as a as a, a black police officer and a football coach. Um uh, the book is available at Amazon. Um, it's available uh, Barnes and Nobles, uh, but uh, more conveniently, it's uh, downtown at, at, at uh, Strive Bookstore, um, uh, Ninth and Nicollet. Um, is uh, so you can get it in person there, and then, but uh, through the publisher, Ashet. It's available anywhere you can get books, uh, audio books, you know, Google books, you name it. So, yeah, uh, I listen to it on Audible. It makes it it makes it pretty dynamic. I can I, I heard you in the beginning. Yeah, I I tried my best. How about that? So it <laughs> you was, got a voiceover I'm glad, career. I'm glad they gave me the opportunity, but <laughs> our narrator that we I picked, he was phenomenal. But I, I you know, I it, it it's a great experience. Yeah. I appreciate you and the ways that for sure you've been intertwined in, in my life and my kids' life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I coached my older kids, my younger all of them. kids. All of, them. all of them. Right. You coached yeah. with my cousin, Chris Miller. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You yeah. all were at North together. There. Like, I, I miss him with my entire soul. Um, yeah. He was going to be, you know, riding the streets with you, I thought. But and, and, well, he did. He did. As a, as a CSO and as a civilian, he uh, he rode a lot. He he did a lot of ride alongs with me. And as a CSO, I had Chris actually like doing stuff, like helping mm -hmm. reports and searching suspects. Like I I was getting him ready. I was getting him ready. He was out there with yeah. me. I heard that physical might have been a bit of a challenge for him. <laughs> <laughs> All of us. <laughs> I uh, man, do I miss him? But I but I think you know part of. Part of what I think the point of this is, is that 
when you sort of understand the people that are in policing, like it's easy to make things so global that you miss the goodness in it, mm-hmm. whether or not it's a North North high school or North community or any urban neighborhood that you're in. If you only understand it from how other people are describing it, you miss the opportunity and, and the, the, the beauty that lies within it. Yes. Um, it doesn't mean it don't need to go further than where it is, but I think this story is just an intertwining of, you know, a, a family that has a rich legacy of caring for this community, from being from this community, seeing themselves in the people that they are providing service to. That's right. Um, while also recognizing that there's some broken pieces, right? Yeah. We live in a neighborhood that's beautiful and there's some broken pieces. That's right. That's and right. we went to a school that's beautiful with some broken pieces. <laughs> and we're here to fix the broken, right? That's right. That's all we can do. I appreciate you. Well, I appreciate being here. And it's always a pleasure to see you. And um, yeah, you're right. Connected to all your kids. All of them. <laughs> all of them. All of them. <laughs> yeah. That's good, though. And that's I, still, love. I still get fussed up by Ruck. So he always, he still treat me like I'm. 15 and him calling me after the game like why you do that why you do that so oh man i, I, I gotta I, love it, man. I gotta hear it yeah I, I you know it. actually when, when you were talking about your dad being a bus driver i'm like oh my god i forgot about that because yeah. I, I heard it when you said it in the book and yeah. or when they was read and i'm like i forgot they were both driving the bus at the same time yeah 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 yep i mean like i say them is them is my uncles man so like it when it comes down to it um yeah i love you guys your family i mean you guys you guys are my family too so it's it was just it's, it's you know how it go whenever you need something it's i don't even i yeah. know it i know it hope you, you are, know there, it. nothing really i can say you know what I'm it's that north side loyalty we're a phone yeah, call away. i just i mean i see i see they call me i'm like okay well i, I just got to make that time available so yeah that's how it I, is yeah i appreciate it Jalen Baker. So I just finished talking to OA and we were talking about his new book where he talked about growing up on the North side. Mm-hmm. And um, I want to get your perspective on what it's been like to grow up um, in this community. Um, from my perspective, growing up in this community, it's been fun. It's been um, scary at times. It's been um kind of all over the place. I had like a, a crazy experience growing up over North. Um, I live close to all of my family members, close to my school. So the commute was pretty short. Um, everybody knows everybody over North. Um, my school is small. So, I mean, it, it kind of helped me out versus a big school where I don't really know too many people. I think like it's more better for me in a community where everybody's engaged with everybody. One of the reasons why I wanted you at North is because of that small school feel. Right. Did you feel cared for in that environment? Yeah, I I felt really cared for, especially because, um, I mean, you went there too, but a lot of the teachers and staff and stuff already know who you are and know like us as a family. So it was like, I didn't really have to grow to learn any new bodies or like, build no real new relationships it's kind of like they already were there versus like coming to a complete new school and I already played sports with them during middle school and stuff like that so one of the things that I talked with um OA or Officer Adams about was um him coaching the football team as a police officer did did him and the other coaches being police officers did how much was that a factor for you all? Um, I think it factored pretty big in our lives and, and in our school because, I mean, it's the north side. And it's like these kids, they can get into a lot of trouble super easily just by being influenced or being a follower or trying to fit in. You know, so like him being an officer and the football coach, it's like he's never going to tell us no wrong on the field or off the field. And it's like him being an officer, it's like, if I go out here and do bad in these streets, I know it's a chance he could catch me and I ain't going to play against Edison next week or whatever school we play against. And it's like, 
I don't want those repercussions or anything like that. So he kind of built like a, a, um, a discipline system kind of for us where it's like we know what right from wrong. And it's just, yeah. How was the team impacted after George Floyd's murder? Like, did you all talk about that as a team? Did you guys get angry with the officers? Like, was it tension? Like, what happened? Um, so we did talk about it. Owe, he told us, like, when, when, around that time when that happened, he sat the whole team down instead of practice, before practice, he sat the whole team down. And he was basically just telling us, like, how we should act if we have an encounter with a police officer, what things not to do and what things to do to keep us safe and keep uh, and make the officer feel safe. Um, he told us about, like, the officer that was um, involved with George Floyd. He said that he knew he knew the guy, uh, Derek Chauvin. He was basically just telling us, like, how to stay safe while dealing with the police. What was you guys' conversation like in the locker room without them? Were you guys angry or did you feel like he provided a safe space I mean, to talk about in front of him? When we were in the locker room, like, like without OA or without any coaches, it was kind of like F the police or whatever, like, you know, those, those type of feelings towards it. But, like, when it came to OA and the rest of the officers on the team, it was just like we knew that they were different. We knew that they actually cared for us. They really wanted the best for us. And it was like, it, it never really played a factor that like OA is a part of those bad police officers or anything. It's just like, okay, something that was really messed up happened. Uh, OA is an officer too, but OA is different from that type of officer. And like, he's he's like genuine with his feelings, with, with what he talks about. So, I mean, it didn't really affect us looking at OA. And how many officers were your coaches? Did you guys have four or five? It was, ab- it was about, yeah, like four or five. I can't remember all of them and all their names, but it was about four or five of them. When Minneapolis Public Schools ended the contract with the police department and Officer Adams had to leave your community service, um, their CSOs had to leave the school, how did the team respond to it? The team, it kind of Im- impacted us kind of badly because Officer Owe, having him inside the school, like during school, it was like a getaway when you needed a getaway, someone that you could talk to about anything while you're in school. Um, it was also somewhere where it's like, if I can't focus in class, I know I can go to Owe's office and do my homework there or ask him questions about this, this or that and just life in general. So like with him, without him being in the school, it was just like, dang, who could we turn to? And it's not that we didn't trust anybody else in the school. It's just that OA had that much of an impact on us where we felt so comfortable talking to him about any situation. You all went to the school board to ask for them to make an exception for you. How did that happen? And why do you think that happened? Uh, yeah, we went to the school board and uh, it was a bunch of people out there, too. Um, I think I really think it happened. Um, our quarterback at the time, Zach Yeager, he organized it with our with a group chat and the players. Uh, he told us to all be there. Uh, he told us it was mandatory and we all showed up and um, we just basically just wanted the people in the community to see our side of it versus just like the community side, because they don't know what's going on inside of North's community, you know, so we just wanted them to see our perspective. I feel like they heard us. I don't know about listening. Like, I feel like they hear what we're saying because, I mean, they still took them out of the school at the end of the day, but I do feel like they heard our side. I don't really know the, the ins and outs of it and why he really got taken out, like why our side didn't pull any weight for real, but I feel like they listened. I just don't feel like it was enough action that happened to keep them in school. You all had Showtime following you. There's a documentary called Boys in Blue, and it was following the school. And the way that they sort of described the community and the school was, for me, my perspective, it just looked ultra dangerous um, in a way that I haven't really experienced the school, but did you think it was an accurate reflection? And like, what's the student perspective around safety there? I would say it's about 
sixty percent accurate because like I, I agree with you like when you say that it looked ultra dangerous because um like I mean maybe that's just showtime and that the way they edit stuff or anything like that. But I mean there's always like danger and, and risk over north, but I feel like as far as school, everything was pretty safe. Um we had the orange shirts outside of school after after every school day. Um, we had Miss Free Slavin's husband cutting off the street with his truck and stuff, making sure, you know, directing traffic, making sure nobody coming down there speeding. So, I mean, it was a lot of safety precautions and stuff took at school. I don't really, I never really felt unsafe at school. It may be chaotic and, and, and rowdy, but I never really got the unsafe feeling at school. On my way home, I mean, pretty much because I mean, I always play sports, so I couldn't talk for anybody else. But all of our, all of my teammates, we always made sure that nobody walked home. Nobody walks home, whether you got to go to Brooklyn Park or, you know, even further. We always arrange rides for everybody, make sure nobody's walking, make sure everybody gets home safe. So, I mean, I never really had no worries. Mm-hmm. Did it change at all after Sean Hill was murdered? Um, yes. We never let anybody walk home, but, like, after that happened, it really made us, like, take it even more seriously. Like, at this point, we're not even going to walk from school to the field. We're going to all drive. We're going to all, you know, even if it takes two trips, we're going to all make sure that we're all, you know, around each other at all times so that, you know, we could prevent stuff like that. Jalen, for the people that are unfamiliar with North High School and they have opinions about the safety or what's happening in high school. How would you describe North High? Um, I would say North High is definitely a safe place. They definitely keep kids, you know, inside the building, in classes, out the hallways. They take uh, precautions after school by having the orange shirts outside and blocking off the streets, controlling the traffic, making sure that um, everybody's getting to where they're going safely. Um, so yeah, I feel like it would be a safe place. It seems like there's a lot of adult support there. Did you feel that way? Uh, yeah, I definitely felt that way. Um, like even the alumni of some, sometimes in school, the alumni would just come up to the school just because just to, you know, check on the kids or their old teachers and they would stop in and give advice or, you know, stop in at practice and practice with us for, but it was always like a, a community, whereas like everybody's all in, everybody's putting in, everybody's pitching in. Yeah. Do you feel proud of being an alumni? Yeah, I definitely feel proud. I, I still got my jersey hung up in my room. I'm rocking the shirt right now. So I'm definitely a proud alumni. What is your stance around officers in the school? You didn't have that long being there without OA and the other uh, officers in the school. Do you think that that was the right decision or the wrong decision for that school? Um, I feel like we should have kept the officers inside the school just because they were always there to keep the athletes in line for sure. Well, at least the football players. Um, they are also there to protect the school from any other safety from outside. Um, they were there just to be called on when they were needed. Like if I needed to go to their office and talk about something or if I needed to go in there and have a quiet place to do my homework. Um, It was always something that was essential for the school to me. All right. If there's anything else you want to say about North High or if you want to shout out any teachers, who would you, what would you say? Yeah. uh, Shout out OA. Shout out um, to Ms. Stryko, the track coaches. Um, Shout out to the new basketball coach. He just got hired. Uh, I like him. Shout out to Coach Locke. And, yeah. You had a good relationship with Coach Locke. Yeah. Uh, Coach Locke de- definitely was definitely was my guy. Um, it started off with my big brother, Rylan. And then after that, once he knew that I was Rylan's little brother, and I started having his class once I was a junior and senior, and I was playing football, it was just like the connection just clicked. We got the same birthday. Uh, we talk all the time. I see him out in the community. So yeah, that's my, that's definitely my guy. Awesome. Thank you, Taylor. All right. Thank you.